Praise the Lord and welcome to our weekly 30-minute podcast, The Elephant in the Room with Bishop Michael Bellamy. Our podcast will cover various topics that are often overlooked, misunderstood, or even controversial from a biblical perspective. We're blessed to have a team of wonderful producers who want to make each episode something that will be enjoyable and informative. During this episode, we will continue last week's discussion on grief and how it affects us in its beginning stages and changes us as time passes. We'll continue our deep dive into Job's story and review several ways we can process and cope with grief. Today's podcast was produced by Lady Satoya Clanton. It was edited by Lady Clanton and Sister Tynika Harris Coronado. I'll be right back with today's episode. Last week, we talked about grief and its different presentations and someone's suffering loss. We also took a look at the book of Job and its perfect example of what grief looks like from a biblical perspective. Let's take another look at Job to get a better understanding of how he experienced several of the stages and types of grief. He experienced shock and denial pain and guilt, depression, anger, bargaining, the upward turn, and acceptance and hope. Throughout his experience, we definitely see how Job experienced cumulative grief with the number of consecutive losses he experienced and the symptoms of normal grief. We also see he may have experienced elements of of the following types of grief, secondary loss, his financial losses threw him into a state of poverty, mask grief, he hid behind his own self-righteousness, disenfranchised grief, his friends didn't believe him when he stood behind his uprightness, traumatic grief, his children were violently killed in a windstorm, To add to Job's grief, Job's wife was angry and likely in a state of depression, having lost all of her children. Job's three friends came to support him, but used the opportunity to point out Job's righteousness as a flaw and likely cause of his sin. Elihu was the only friend who saw Job's grief, understood his despair, recognized the triggers from the other three friends and leaned on God to pull Job out of his state of depression and pity and get him back on the right track in the grieving process and get him back on track. One may ask, how does this apply to us in modern times? Job gained everything he lost and then some because God was always on his side. We have many brethren who are mourning in some way or another. They may be dealing with the loss of loved ones, such as parents or children, issues with their health, including infertility, chronic pain, or learning of a terminal illness not having the lives they always wished for in childhood that they have not realized in adulthood. Losing a job and now being faced with financial instability in their lives, losing a friendship or relationship, whether short or long term, living through a global pandemic that forced isolation from friends and family. No matter how big or small the loss is, We cannot measure the magnitude of the effects those losses have on our sisters and brothers because we are not in their shoes. We must take care not to trivialize their pain and suffering simply because of our connection to God as his children. In looking at the story of Job, we see his and our own humanity through his trek into the valley of sadness and despair. 
which can happen to anyone. We also must consider how our words and actions affect those experiencing grief. Ever been guilty of telling someone who was grieving that they shouldn't express their pain because they are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and should be okay in spite of their hurt? How often do we see our brothers and sisters who are grieving and think that they should be able to just pick themselves up and feel fine after our prescribed length of time? Yes, because we are children of God, we have access to the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, but we must also recognize the frailty of our fleshly state. Not allowing our brethren to grieve properly can have lasting spiritual and natural effects. In her article titled, Grace Through Grief, The Types and Stages of Grief, Beth Filzen wrote, Grief is an individual process. Impacted by the significance of a loss, an individual's loss history, and other factors that are cultural, spiritual, and familial to the individual. Now, I like to share a few ways to process and cope with grief, either as one suffering loss or as the one serving in a supportive role. The Cleveland Clinic offers several ways we can process and cope with grief. If you're experiencing grief, take care of yourself. Practice self-care. During your process of grief, it's important and essential to remember your mind and body by getting enough sleep, eating regular meals, and getting some exercise. These are all important to your mind and body health. From a spiritual perspective, take care of your heart and mind by seeking God's comfort and peace as you process your loss. During your self-care routine, find ways to spend quiet time with God by reading the word and focusing on scriptures that bring comfort, such as Psalms 23, Psalms 61 and 2, and John 14. Stick to a routine. While dealing with the loss of any kind, a routine helps you center yourself and get your focus off of the pain. In many cases, sticking to your routine relaxes your mind and helps you to process the feelings of loss and grief as you adjust to your new normal. For example, if you're going to church on a weekly basis or throughout the week and it's part of your routine, Try to stick to your schedule as much as possible to maintain normalcy in the midst of the change. Attend to your emotions. This tip is very important because when we suffer losses, our minds would love to forget everything that is happening or has happened. However, it is crucial to allow your body and mind to experience the emotions and feelings concerning your loss as you work through the grieving process. There is no set time line on how long grief lasts, but know that distracting yourself many times to avoid the pain of your loss causes the grief to last longer than it is intended to. Healthy ways to manage your emotions include spending time reminiscing on good moments with the loss of a loved one can help ease the pain. Reach out to others. One healthy way to process grief is not isolate yourself. Doing the process of grief, time alone is necessary for reflection, but being surrounded by loved ones, that our sharing in that loss has its benefits for the healing process. Reaching out to others also helps to prevent you from sinking deeper into the negative feelings that come with grief. Speak to a therapist or grief counselor. 
One very underutilized resource is reaching out to a mental health professional and talking about what you're feeling and the emotions you have and gaining insight and knowledge on those feelings and emotions mean to you. Professional resources are especially important when the grief process seems to have stalled on any one of its stages. This is Bishop Michael Bellamy. I hope you enjoy our podcasts and subscribe to our Facebook page. You will find our weekly 30-minute podcasts on many of your favorite platforms. Would you please tell your family and friends to listen in as well? We would also love to hear from you. Feel free to connect with us on Facebook and via email at theelephant2022 at gmail.com. If your loved one is grieving, find positive ways to support them while giving them the space to process what has happened. Matthew chapter 5 verse 4 reads, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. We know that God is the ultimate salve to ease the pain and heal the wounds that grief brings, but we can also be willing vessels in comforting those who grieve. There are many positive and helpful ways for us to support our brothers and sisters who are grieving. According to the Cleveland Clinic, one of the best ways to support someone going through the grieving process is to practice patience. While working through this difficult time, they offer four ways out of many that can be helpful through the grieving process. Be present. When supporting someone who is grieving, it's important to be there for them in the ways that matter most to them. This may include being a listening ear or offering a healthy distraction, such as exercise. Offer help. Being available to one who is grieving helps them to process grief healthily. Some ways to help include offering assistance with planning the arrangements for a loved one's funeral, helping them look for new job opportunities, signal that you're open to talking. One way this method of support helps is showing the grieving person that you're open to talking to them about their loss. Many times the person who's grieving is waiting for a signal that it's okay to share stories and process their feelings with others. If they do open up, listen more than you talk. Don't minimize someone's loss. This is probably the most important way to support one who is grieving. Cleveland Clinic wrote the following. Take care not to communicate that someone's loss wasn't a big deal or that they should have moved on already. And don't put a positive spin on loss either. Statements like, it's all for the best, or they're in a better place now. May be well intentioned, but it can sound dismissive to a person who's grieving. Instead of reaching for silver linings, Allow your loved one to process their feelings honestly. It's a natural and necessary part of living. In their article, Bible Verses About Grief, the Bible Study 2 staff wrote, Yet grief, as painful as a season as it is, is a necessary part of our healing. To run from grief is to run from the very thing that can quill the pain of our loss. Our grief has a purpose. If we come to God and use Bible verses and prayer for healing, grieving is the process God uses to bring us to a place of wholeness. They offered several scriptures that can also help. With the grieving process, Matthew chapter five, verse number four, blessed are those who mourn 
for they shall be comforted. Revelations chapter 21 verse 4. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Psalms 147 verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 7, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Psalms 34, 18, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Romans eight eighteen. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Psalms 73 and 26, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. The Cleveland Clinic reminds us it's important to remember that grief doesn't fit into neat boxes or timelines. Everyone's grief and grieving timelines are different. Also, there's never a time when you're done with grief. Your connection with a loved one who's passed a dissolved marriage, an abandoned dream, etc., becomes integrated into your ongoing life story. It's forever a part of who you are. The next time you encounter someone who has suffered some type of loss, I urge you to practice the fruit of the spirit of love, gentleness, and long-suffering when dealing with them. You never know how what words you say or how you handle them in one of their most vulnerable states can have lasting effects on their spiritual, emotional, and mental health. Well, friends, that's all we have for today on this episode. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode, which was produced by Lady Satoya Clanton. Be safe, stay healthy, God bless.